there. Welcome to this build of David Boddington's 48 inch wingspan Tomboy Senior. Now David Boddington reworked what was a much older design, the Tomboy which was smaller and came out in 1950. Now we've got to a stage with this build where we're almost ready to start covering the fuselage and get this thing, getting this thing ready for the airfield. We've got the wings covered, tailplane and fin covered. We've had all the electronics in in the last video and got all of the controls sorted out. And there's just a few little jobs left to do now on the fuselage before we cover it. And essentially we've got a little bit of sheeting that we left out here, either side, so that we could eye up the control rods of the servo from the servos to the surface control surfaces. We've done set those up now, so we're ready to fill that in. We've also got a little bit of balsa that needs to go on to close in this front section here, just because it start it looks a little bit ugly as it is where you can see the stitching. So just a simple plate over that. We've got a hatch. We've got a battery compartment here which will allow the battery to slide back but we need to put a little bit of a hatch over that a removable hatch just something very simple we've also got to fuel proof around the engine bay uh, we've got to do this really well it's going to be a diesel mills 1.3 diesel engine 1950s engine again so it's a kind of in line with the vintage model but it needs to be really well fuel proof because of that diesel fuel We've got to mount the engine with a two degree right thrust. And there's just a few little jobs like that that need doing. For example, as well, this dowel, this carbon fiber dowel hasn't been epoxied in. So that needs to be done. The one thing, I mean, this is all very straightforward, but the one thing I haven't got my head around just yet is the windscreen. And I'll tell you what, I'll just zoom in and show you what I'm thinking. Okay, so we're going to have an acetate windscreen that comes around here. We've got a good template that was with the plans, which actually seems to fit really well. Now, the acetate, we can glue along this top edge, down the side, along here. But when it comes to this front edge, there's nothing really for it to glue against. It's, and I, I don't feel happy just butting it down on top of there because the top of the the exhaust outlet for the Mills engine is going to be around here and it is literally going to bombard that windscreen with uh, with fuel and it, it's, it's going to end up seeping under here and into this compartment which would just make a real mess so what I'm thinking of doing and I haven't bottomed this out yet but I'm thinking of cutting a piece of balsa only about this thick and just curve so it comes around here and just if you can see in the way that just provides a little bit of a step up I'm maybe not explaining this very well um, but if I just cut this there we go just a little bit of a step up like that and a lip to which we can glue the uh, the acetate onto so we'll just have something there so I, i'm going to play about with that and see what i can do but first of all i'll get this sheeting in i'm going to make that hatch we talked about and um and, and get that front so it looks a lot neater and then we'll come back and we'll see where we are and my ideas for this should have developed by then Right, well I've got the, uh, the sheeting in there, really simple job, nothing complicated. I've also put um, a piece of sheeting over, turn that the right way up, over that ugly stitching and just box that in. And I've put a little bit of a chamfer on the top there, so any oil will flow down here and drip off the bottom. Now, where the landing gear comes out of that boxed in section, it was quite hard to box this in properly without big gaps because of the stitching, the glue that was holding the stitching. I mean, this all needs sanding off and profiling, but I'm still gonna end up with those big holes. So I'll show you what I'm gonna to do to, uh, to fill those. Now, I've got some epoxy 
just normal two part 30 minute zap epoxy and I'm going to use it modified <laughs> to fill those holes now if I just use this epoxy as it is now it's just basically going to run inside there and disappear and uh, and it won't do a very good job so what I am going to do is I'm going to add something to the epoxy to thicken it up and this is just plain old balsa dust which I collect when I'm doing a lot of sanding and I'm just going to add that to the epoxy. Now I wouldn't do this to something that was structural. Um, you know if I was gluing a firewall in and I wanted maximum strength I wouldn't do this. But I find this is a really good, I, I mean I do this quite often on various things and I find it's a really good way to thicken up epoxy and make it much more uh, useful for filling gaps like that. Like I say it will alter the strength and uh, you know there are probably just as good other glues on the market but I don't have them I have aliphatic resin CA and um, PVA so I don't really have anything else to use now you can see that's getting quite thick I'm going to put a little bit more and it's quite sandable as well it's uh, it's a little bit weaker you know the the normal epoxy because it's got all this balsa dusting now what we need to do is just carefully put this in to the holes without spreading it everywhere and limit the amount of sanding that we have to do afterwards. So you can see the consistency, it just ends up like a really thick, thick paste whereas the, the epoxy I normally use is quite thin and actually would run in here and disappear quite quickly. So I'm just going to put that in. I'll use a bit of tissue when I've done it, just to go around and uh, and clean up. Let me get a bit now and, uh, and and take it off the wire because there's no point in having too much more. Uh, sorry, too much than uh, than is actually needed. There we go. A little bit more underneath, and then that will be done. Once I've done this I'm then going to do the fuel proofing. Right, well, I've now got this wiped off with just a little bit of uh, tissue and I'm waiting for that to set to cure before I can actually sand this and just smooth it off which it, it definitely needs but you can see that's filled that quite nice now I've been giving some thought why that is setting to this windscreen and I've cut a small sort of uh, semicircle which is going to fit on top of there like that and I can glue that down and now it provides this lip that I was talking about and the acetate, let me just zoom that in a little bit there we go, that's uh, a little bit closer so now we've got this stand up and the acetate can glue against that and uh, that will be so much better than just having it butting down onto there I, I just I, I just can't see how that would work so I think this is uh, 1 8th so 3.2 mil balsa and as long as I glue this down properly so there's no gaps underneath it that will really really add to the strength of that windscreen but also the fuel proof nature so what I'm going to do now is I might just give this another little bit of a sand. I, I put a piece of balsa on there, I drew around the underside, cut it slightly, uh, slightly generously and then I've just been sanding it, testing, sanding it to get this so it's a nice fit and we're almost there now. So uh, I'll just sand it a little bit more perhaps and then I'll glue that into place. <clears throat> 
Okay, a very quick update. You can see that's cured now and it's been sanded and uh, it's done a really good job and uh, nice and solid, no fuel seeping in there. Hopefully that will be fuel proof because it's epoxy even though it's got the, the sawdust, the balsa dust. Now, on the cockpit I've glued that around the windscreen and I thought I would cut myself a piece of uh, really rough acetate rather than trying to demonstrate with a plastic bag and you can see now how that is going to provide a really good gluing edge for, uh, for that windscreen and hopefully we can get that nice and fuel proof. I'm obviously going to have to cut a better windscreen than that. <laughs> so now the next thing is I was thinking I would fuel proof it but actually I think I need to get the engine fitted first with that two degrees, I'm fairly sure it's two degrees of right thrust, I will check and then I'll show you how I set that up. Okay I'll show you how I calculate a two degree angle of thrust. There's, <laughs> there's probably better methods than this but this is how I do it. I've got the fuselage centre line at an absolute 90 degree angle to the front of the bench and I've got these blocks on the very very front of this bench. Now I've attached an aluminium bar, straight bar, to the front of the engine. Now if I put this onto the engine bearers, the engine, from this ruler to this ruler I know is 415 millimetres. And if I want to put a two degree angle going um, to the right, I know that this ruler needs to be set in by about uh, 14 and a half mil compared to this one. So I've got this ruler 116 millimeters out from the very front of the bench here. This one I've got set at 101 and a half. So this one is 14 and a half millimeters less than this one. So now I know that if I put the tip of that bar on there and put the bar onto here, that is giving me a two degree angle of thrust for the engine. So we've got 116 out from the front of the bench here, we've got 101 and a half out from the front bench here, and we've got a 415 millimeter uh, bar to this, from that roller to this roller. And I calculated these distances with an online calculator. There's loads of them available. So now I've got that set up like that, all I need to do is mark where I'm going to drill my holes and I will take this over to my pillar drill or my bench drill and I will drill them appropriately. Like I say this works for me I know this is right other people might not like it might have better ways of doing it let me know how you do it I'd be really interested Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to mark that up, get this drilled and get the engine mounted. Right, well I've now got the holes drilled and I've got this bolted just very roughly in place. To be honest I've only got one nut on, but I've got all four of the bolts in place uh, just pushed through. I, I, I didn't want to put all the nuts on and then have to take it off again. And you can see there there's a, an angle of thrust now on that. You see it's slightly closer there to that cheek than it is to that. It does still move a little bit but the holes are now correctly drilled. So that's great and I, I've just got some steel washers on there at the moment. What I will do is get some nice black washers, maybe something a tad bigger because as much support as I can get on those lugs the better because it's an old engine the, the holes are all different sizes and they don't doesn't look that strong the lugs on there so as much support I can get the, the, the better really. So I'm going to take the engine off now and it's time to get this fuel proofed. Well it's time to really crack on now and get this finished so we can get it covered. Now the first thing I'm going to do are there's two jobs I've got left to do and the first thing I'm going to do is the fuel proofing and what we're doing basically is sealing the wood around the engine compartment where we're going to have a lot of fuel and a lot of oil that could soak into the wood. 
So I'm going to be using my 30 minute two part epoxy and I'm going to be thinning this down just very slightly with some 95% ethanol and you can use 75% uh, ethanol but I, I prefer the 95% the because it has just a little bit less water in it and I'm thinning it down just enough so that I can use a paintbrush just a small uh, like hobby brush and I'm just going to uh, paint that all over the or coat all of the wood in that engine bay basically the, the wood that's going to remain bare after the covering but what I will do as well is just come a little way uh, onto the wood where the covering will lap over that to hopefully make a nice seal and if there is any fuel or oil that seeps under the covering just a little bit it won't seep into the wood because of that, that epoxy. So it's a really simple job. Once you've thinned it down, be careful not to thin it too much and then you just brush it on all the areas that you need to protect and like I said, the, the bare wood areas essentially. Now the other job I've got to do, and another very simple job, the last thing before we cover it, is just to make a removable hatch here where we've got this, uh, this bay we can put the battery into. And rather than using balsa, because I want to keep it really thin and really light, but quite strong still, because it's going to have the battery on top of it. And I'm going to be using some of this 0.8mm uh, plywood, I think anyway. I, I'll, I'm, I may use a slightly thicker one, but we'll come back and have a look at that when I've done it. And I'm just essentially going to put some hooks on the front, so it'll hook under this cross member here, and a screw at the back to hold that into just a little bit of wood. So it's uh, removable, nice and easy with a hex head driver, just a single screw to take out that hatch. I mean, once you've got it set up, I shouldn't actually be uh, taking it on and off at all. But uh, if it's easy, all the better. So I will now get on with the fuel proofing and we'll come back and have a look at this when it's done. Well, I've now got the fuel proofing done and covered around the whole of the inside there and these uh, these edges and that's gone on really nicely just a, a single coat and I don't think I am going to add an additional coat that looks absolutely fine I'll need to re-drill uh, the holes on the beach mounts for the engine because those have got a little bit of epoxy but that's no big deal I've also completed the hatch on the underside here and uh, I'll just we'll take a closer look at that I'll move the camera so the hatch I did end up making out of the 116 ply the 1.6 mil and as I said flexible so it gets a little bit of a curve but it's still really strong and really light there's nothing to it I put a couple of lugs on the bottom which you can see there and that just they just slot under that cross former put three pieces on here just to stop that falling in and on the back there's a, a piece of 316 balsa here and I've just set in a couple of pieces of 3mm plywood that the screws screw into it just gives it something to really grip some purchase but what I would say is if you're going to do this don't try and screw them in straight away drill a very small pilot hole and that will prevent it from splitting. Uh, it's essential really. I think if I just screwed the screws in it would have um, it would have just it would have just split it. So if I put this in it's like that and it's nice and secure just put the screw in right get this done as quick as I can I won't, I won't do the other screw but you can see there that is really nice and solid a little bit of movement there on, on that front edge but I've, I haven't wanted to do it too tight because there's covering film going to come under that but it is held nice and smooth with the, with the fuselage so I think that is a really good solution and it still allows me to get the, uh, the battery slotted in there right see yeah a little bit of movement there but like I say the covering film is going to come under there and I think that will be absolutely fine well 
All that's left now is to give this a really nice finishing sand and make sure there's no high points or rough spots and it's just feeling lovely, ready to be covered because there's nothing else to do to this fuselage now other than covering it and that is really exciting because that's more or less the last thing we need to do other than of course fit it out. As part of that next video, the covering, I'll also be doing the, window, uh, the windows and the windscreen. So I need to give a little bit of thought to how I'm going to do that to try and make it as fuel proof as possible. But I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. Thanks very much for watching and I hope you come back and see how we get on in getting this fuselage covered. And in the meantime, before then, I need to start thinking about a design because I've got a few ideas but I'm not totally sure how it's going to pan out yet. So anyway, thanks very much for watching.